what really happened to the helicopter that crashed into the Hudson River on April 10th, 2025. Both of the helicopter's rotors were intact, there was no spin, and yet the aircraft literally broke apart in the sky and plummeted into the Hudson River, killing all of the six passengers, including one pilot, a family of five with three children from Barcelona. And this crash was really atypical, so I wanna go through everything we know so far and my own opinion about this incident. If you're new around here, I'm Mike, I'm a student pilot, a former engineer, and here on this channel, I talk about some aviation incidents, some trip reports, and some travel hacks. So what do we know so far? On April 10th, 2025, a tour helicopter took off at around 3.17 p.m. and crashed into the Hudson River shortly after near Pier 40, almost exactly where the miracle on Hudson happened. Second. On board was one pilot, a family of five, including three children, and it seemed like a routine flight, but 16 minutes after takeoff, something devastating happened. Eyewitnesses said that the helicopter went into a nosedive and exhibited some erratic behavior, erratic flying maneuvers, but it leveled off after the nosedive, and shortly later, the airplane disintegrated in the air, losing its tail and both rotors, and it crashed into the Hudson River upside down, instantly killing all of the passengers. But before the incident, both rotors and the tail was intact, and the pilot did not make an emergency call. Pier 38 near Tower, squawk the street, radar contact 700, traffic about a quarter mile east westbound, indicating 600. So what is the most likely reason for this incident? Why did the pilot not declare an emergency? And why was there such a, an erratic flight maneuver before the actual crash? So there are a few things that could have happened here. And in all honesty, I do not know that much about helicopters personally. I am a student pilot to fly fixed wing aircraft. So this is just my opinion from what I've seen from the videos and what I've researched on the internet so far. So the most likely reason for the crash would be a flight control system failure. A mechanical failure in the swash plate, the cyclic collective controls or the pitch links could cause abrupt nose down pitch or erratic control with limited recovery. Another reason could be a mechanical jam or servo malfunction. If the cyclic or collective jammed or moved erratically, the pilot may have had limited or delayed responses. And then rare but possible, there could have been a structural or aerodynamic anomaly. It's rare but possible that an aerodynamic distortion, weight imbalance, or component fatigue caused unpredictable flight behavior. But why was there no mayday call? This kind of hints at that the issue was very sudden and the pilot actually didn't have time to call a mayday because he was busy with the emergency checklist. And in aviation, we always say aviate, navigate, communicate. So the first two have priority over communicating. So maybe the pilot was just so busy with trying to recover the aircraft that he did not have the time or the mental capacity to communicate to the tower that there was an emergency. He didn't have time to declare an emergency. But it's kind of surprising because the nose that happened a little before the incident. So as the pilot was leveling off, there might have been an opportunity to just call out a mayday, but he didn't do it. So the question is, was this nosedive a planned maneuver that he was very busy with, or was this already part of the failure of the flight systems? So let's talk about the aircraft itself. The aircraft was a Bell 206L-4, a 21-year-old helicopter, which sounds quite old, but in aviation, these aircrafts are very, very well maintained, and these aircrafts can fly for many, many decades before being decommissioned. Mostly they get decommissioned not because they have been used for so long or they're old, they mostly get decommissioned when it is no longer efficient to fly these aircrafts because they have higher fuel consumption, the maintenance costs are higher. So that would be a reason to upgrade to a newer aircraft. So these aircrafts, even though very old, they just stay in operation for very long and they stay in well-maintained condition for a very long time. Right. And the Bell 206L is a workhorse in the industry. It's a very well-known aircraft and it is a very reliable aircraft as well. The tail number of the specific aircraft was M216MH and I checked on flight radar and this was the fifth flight of the day with this aircraft. And what was a little bit surprising is that the time between its last landing and its departure was only six to seven minutes, which begs the question, did the pilot actually have enough time to do a pre-flight check? Or is this a very common thing with these tour operators that they just come, they land, uh, passengers deboard, 
the new passengers board the aircraft and they fly off immediately. And there's just a pre-flight check of the aircraft at the beginning of the day. The previous day, the helicopter made 13 flights in one day with no reported incidents. Also on the day, April 10th, there were no reported incidents with the aircraft. So the question is what did happen? Because the maintenance logs for this aircraft are also in order. According to the FAA registry, the helicopter is registered to Meridian Helicopters LLC. The helicopter received its airworthiness certificate in November of 2016 and it expires in November of 2029. So, so everything seems to have been in order with the helicopter. So we know that this incident didn't happen due to weather or we can assume that it didn't happen due to pilot error. It has to be some maintenance issue or an airframe issue of the aircraft itself. But we would have to guess that it's more about the maintenance because this aircraft has been in operation for 21 years, so it can't really be an issue coming from the manufacturer. Anyway, as this whole thing unfolds, I might do another update video of this incident. Let me know in the comments down below what you think might have happened or could have happened if you are a helicopter pilot. I'd love to hear your insights as well in the comments down below. And if you want to see a flight review of my recent trip on Qatar Airways on the A320, it'll pop up right here and it'll be in the description box down below. See you in the next one.